The algorithms for two process solution, Peterson's algorithm and Bakery algorithm are all software-based synchronization solutions for critical section problem. And there are hardware-based synchronization solutions too. Even these software solutions and software synchronization tools such as Semaphore can make use of these hardware-based solutions for a better, fast and efficient implementation. The simplest hardware mechanism for critical section problem in a uniprocessor environment is to disable the interrupt. Suppose we have n number of processors with a single processor. One process before entering the critical section should disable the interrupt. So as long as that process is inside the critical section, context switch never occurs. But this disabling hardware interrupt method is not practical in a multiprocessor environment. Another hardware mechanism for synchronization is by using hardware instructions. Some systems or some processors provide hardware instruction for some basic synchronization issues. And these instructions are indivisible or atomic. The operations corresponding to these instructions execute without any interruption. Also, if in a multiprocessor environment, if multiple processors try to execute these instructions simultaneously, then they will be executed sequentially in some arbitrary order. One such instruction is test and set instruction. The test and set instruction works on a Boolean variable named lock which is initialized to false. If the lock variable is false, it means the lock is unset, the critical section is free, a process which tries to enter the critical section can enter the critical section by setting lock to true. And if lock variable is true, then it means the lock is set, one process who is trying to enter the critical section cannot enter the critical section. So in the entry section called a process executes while test and set lock do nothing. So what this function should do if the lock value is true, if the lock variable value is true, then this function should return a true value. So this becomes while true. The process will keep on waiting in the while loop without entering the critical section. And if lock value is false, then the function should return false. So this becomes a while false. The process will exit the while loop and can enter the critical section. Thus if lock equals true, the function should return true. If lock equals false, the function should return false. So generally, the function should return the value of the lock variable. Thus return the value of lock and then we need to set the lock. If lock equals false along with returning this false value, the lock should be set true and then the process can enter the critical section. And if lock value is true, we can let lock to remain as true. Thus whether the value of lock is false or true, finally the value of lock should be true. So this function sets lock to true and returns the previous value of lock. Thus how can we implement this function? The function should return a boolean value. So boolean test and set and this function can change the value of lock. So we can pass the lock variable along with its address. The address of the lock variable is passed to the function. So the variable target and the variable lock both now points to the same memory location. Assume lock is initialized to false. Now target also points to the same memory location whose value is false. 
Now this function should return the current value of log and we may change the value of log so we shall copy this value to another boolean variable. Now boolean rv contains the value false. This value can be returned at the end of the function. Also this function should set lock equals true for that perform target equals true. The changes made to target are automatically reflected to the lock variable. So the lock is set to true. And the previous value which is the false value is returned by this function. So the while loop becomes while false. The while loop exits and the process will enter the critical section. Let the process be P0. P0 is inside the critical section. And while a process is inside the critical section, the lock is set to true. Another process, if tries to enter the critical section, it cannot. And this process, while exiting from the critical section, executes set lock equals false. So that now the lock is unset, any process who is trying to enter the critical section can enter the critical section. So this function tests the value of lock and return the value of lock. If lock equals false, the lock is set to true and the process will enter the critical section. If lock is true, the lock will remain as true itself and the process keep on waiting for the lock. And while exiting from the critical section, lock is set to false. Now let's see whether this algorithm satisfies, whether this function satisfies mutual exclusion. Suppose one process P0 is trying to enter the critical section. It executes in its entry section code while test and set lock. Suppose the value of lock is initialized to false. The address of the lock variable is passed to the function. Now target also points to the same memory location. The value of log is copied to another boolean variable rv and then the target is set to true means the log is set to true. So the log is set to true, the value false will be returned by the function. So the while loop exits, the process enters the critical section. P0 is inside the critical section. While P0 is inside the critical section, suppose one another process P1 is trying to enter the critical section. It executes the same function. In the entry section called while test and set lock. Now the lock value is true, so a true value will be returned. Boolean RV is true and that true value is returned and the lock will remain to be true. Thus while true in the entry section code it becomes while true. The process cannot enter the critical section. It will keep on waiting in the while loop. Thus mutual exclusion is guaranteed. Now what about progress? Suppose we have two processes P0 and P1. Let P0 set lock to true and enter the critical section. P1 doesn't wish to enter the critical section now. P1 is in the reminder section. Now P0 completed the execution of critical section and set lock to false. Again, P1 now doesn't wish to enter the critical section. P1 is still in its reminder section. Suppose P0 needs to enter the critical section again. Since lock is false, P0 can again set lock to true and can enter the critical section. So a process who is in the reminder section, who is not in the critical section and who is not even wishing to enter the critical section is not blocking a process who wants to enter the critical section. So progress is guaranteed. But what about bounded weight? Suppose one process P0 set lock to true and entered inside the critical section. While P0 is inside the critical section, one process P1 wishes to enter the critical section. It executed this while loop, but since the lock value is true, it waited in the while loop. After some time, P0 got the processor. 
Pizarro completed the critical section. It exited the critical section by setting lock to false. Assume that P0 is still having the processor. P1 never got the processor. P0 is still having the processor. And P0 completed its reminder section fast and wishes to enter the critical section again. It can now set lock to true and can enter the critical section again. And again, if P1 never gets the processor, P0 is still having the processor. This can happen any number of times. So once a process made a request to enter the critical section, there is no limit to the number of times the other process is allowed to enter the critical section. So there is no bound to the waiting time of this process. So this algorithm does so this, this function doesn't ensure bounded wait. Thus the test and set hardware instruction ensures mutual exclusion and progress but no bounded wait.